Okay, Cam Slater with Reality Check Radio. I'm here with Winston Peters now. Winston, it looks like you're back in Parliament with a, a team behind you. Well, I'm very grateful to the team, and I'm also grateful for those voters that brought us back, because we've done the impossible, and that's so important in this campaign. There's a lot of uh, peep listeners in Reality Check Radio that uh, are sitting on a webinar right now. Uh, have you got a little message for them? Uh, they're probably not going to stay too long with us, and uh, we'll be broadcasting this later, but have you got a message for those uh, people in Reality Check Radio? Well, simply that uh, a grateful thanks goes out to them because it's impossible in this environment to actually get back to the circumstance we're in, but with their help, we've made it. And uh, Parliament will have a watchdog, someone watching every day to make sure we keep the system honest. Just speaking about that watchdog role there, uh, the numbers look a bit baked in now, uh, but of course there's special votes to come, which could be a surprise for everybody. Uh, you're looking uh, just a bit under 6%, which is, what, seven MPs, something like that. Um, do you see yourself uh, being in government with the National Party at some point, or do you think uh, you're just going to wait and see? Well, at the time of this interview, it's much more clever to wait and see, because a lot could happen even now. And uh, always celebrate this one thing. Whatever we're talking about, you could not do unless you're back in Parliament. Of that, we're assured. Uh, obviously, if you were in government, uh, there's a couple of things that you've uh, said were very important. Uh, one being, of course, the inquiry into, uh, into the COVID uh, debacle. Uh, will you still be pushing for that, even if Christopher Luxon uh, doesn't uh, give you a call and, and have you form part of the government? Well, you can have an inquiry by way of uh, parliamentary questions every day, or you can have a proper inquiry within a year, finish it off and respond to the people who have been, in our view, misled, maltreated, and who deserve to be considered in the considerations going forward. So we're going to press on with that, no matter what happens tonight. This campaign, everybody wrote you off. Uh, and then David Seymour and the Labour Party attacked you. And uh, you're back in Parliament now. Have you got a message for either of them? Well, in the big picture, we're looking going forward at uh, ensuring this country recovers its economic and social circumstances from what is a clear position of crisis in so many places. And uh, whatever they might have said, that's their job, but that's our job now. We've got to go out and fix these fundamental things up with our economy and our social life. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Um, Christopher Luxon is going to now have to sit down and get an actual state of the accounts, and things might be a little bit different from what they've promised. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I thought that when they were talking about the preview, that's a pre-election fiscal update on the uh, 12th of September, they hadn't seen with clarity and acuity the true state of the economy. They need to open the books tomorrow and the next week and find out the true circumstances, because they look and will be much better worse than we thought. Chris Hipkins has you know, been talking it up all week that there was a surge on that they were going to come back. You've stated quite clearly you wouldn't work with uh, Chris Hipkins or the Labour Party. Uh, are you satisfied with the result uh, that Labour looks like they've got about 25-26%? They need to understand that when they got the election victory of 2020, it wasn't them and tonight they've found out by themselves they were a mess month after month, and this is a massive loss from having more than half of Parliament last time to now having such a small number in Parliament. It's been a shocker for them, and I hope that they and their supporters will have learned some lessons from it, and dare I say it, the mainstream media and their, um, found, um, their, their woke supporters, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the mainstream media uh, have certainly been uh, running an agenda against New Zealand First. Uh, you know, the National Party and the ACT Party also um, pretty much didn't send too many people our way, certainly on my show, but uh, I found the New Zealand First candidates were willing and able to come at the drop of a hat onto the show. Oh, look, this is a long-term matter here. We're looking going forward at a party that's uh, on the rise again that they all dismissed, they all shut down, and they so malevolently treated. But in the end, we've got to be grateful for small mercies in this context. We are on our way back, big time. It'll take a little time to ensure that the system understands that. 
Winston Peters is always the comeback king. Have you thought about a song for you when you go down and talk to your supporters later on? No, I truly haven't. There's too many so similar songs. There's a lot in uh, folk songs and singing that's about politics. And um, often the message is more with greater clarity in singing than there is in actually speech making. And if you've seen the last um, four months of sausage rolls and ice cream, people got to find out very shortly what that means. Well, Chris Hipkins is going to have to buy his own sausage rolls from, from now on. Ah, oh, look, I, we always knew that he was going to be a problem, uh, that he wasn't up, to, wasn't up to it. But then, as it turns out, nor was his predecessor. No. Anyway, Winston, you're back in Parliament and uh, you can be very pleased with, the, with that result. Um, we've got to wait for the specials, of course, and uh, that's always your refrain, isn't it, after every election? Well, you know, uh, people have all sorts of thoughts and be cheering from the rafters, but the big picture going forward is, as it always was going to be, how good will our country be as a result of tonight's election? And whatever we think, we've got to make sure that we get a far better outcome than we were living through. And that's the key thing. You, you know, you can make promises all you like during an election campaign, but now the rubber hits the road and you've got to look into all of the accounts and see where we're at. And, you know, I have a, a suspicion that uh, Grant Robertson has left the cupboard literally bare in a mountain of debt that we're going to take a generation to pay off. Look, I don't think the commentariat and even the economists quite got what happened here. If you go from the preview, that's the update, just before the 2020 election to where we'd be in 2023 and going forward, there's a massive change there. I don't think they actually read what was going on. They were just too close to it and not looking, stepping back for and examining it. But Grant Robinson, for example, had a budget 19 billion more than we did in his forward projections. That's a colossal amount of money. And there's a good chance that, the, that Grant Robertson might actually be out of Parliament if Labor doesn't get any list MPs. Is that a good thing? Oh, look, uh, the fact is he tried and he found out that in the end, politics is not about the beltway. It's not about the experts. It's not about a group of university trained people, most of whom have never done any business in their life. It is about the people and tonight the people have spoken. And I hope they understand that. Better still, going forward, they learn some dramatic lessons from it. Whether you're in government or, or without government, your comments are that there's going to be a watchdog, someone that's going to hold the government to account or keep control of, of what's going on. Uh, this does, though, give New Zealand First a good uh, footprint to go into the next election, doesn't it? Well, it's always about rebuilding and going forward. It's only a three-year term, so to speak. But uh, our job is to make sure that the, those people, that the people who voted for us for a certain purpose, get us to fulfil that purpose. And that's keeping an eye on things, keeping an eye on things, making sure the public hear the facts and not be drilled down on hype and spin, that we actually go forward with our eyes wide open right here and right now. And that's our purpose. And we are very, very good at it. That's what our you know, history has been, to say things and do things, to raise a roof where nobody else would raise a finger. We're going to go forward doing that. Well, Winston, congratulations on getting back into Parliament. And uh, I'll leave you now to organise the rest of your evening and watch the rest of the numbers roll in. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time on your show all this time. Because in the present climate, having uh, independence of uh, messaging, so to speak, is important. It's the essence of the fourth estate in a democracy, and we were losing it. Well, that's what Reality Check Radio is all about. It's about giving voice to every political party and every candidate that's out there. You know, we've done over 200 um, interviews uh, in the election campaign, a fair few of them with New Zealand First, uh, but that's because they always said yes. And uh, that's our mission. Our mission is to challenge the mainstream media and to get the truth out there. And you're welcome anytime on my show. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.